Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of No Flight Images. In this video, I want to address some aspects of image editing workflows for printing. Now, workflow is the process just from going from your pictures through to uh, the paper coming out of the printer. It's a process. In particular, because I've got this, the Canon Pro 1100 here for testing, I was looking at the Canon PPL software. Now, the Canon PPL software, I've produced a couple of videos already looking at aspects of how to do printing on this printer. And the reason I picked the PPL software is because it's very simple. You open it up, you drop a picture on it, you do a few other odds and ends, and away you go, you get a print comes out. It's really quite easy. And that's specifically why I looked at it. Now, somebody asked me about Canon PPL software, they said, did I use the contrast reproduction feature that's in it? Now, this is a checkbox and it does a form of print sharpening. And for some printing, it may well be quite good. However, you don't know what it's doing. You can't see what's actually happening because you can't save the file. Now, I'll come back to that as to why I think it's not the place to do such things in a bit. But more to the point, there are some other features in the Canon PPL software. Now, this is not detracting from the software in any way because it's very good and it's what I use when I'm teaching people to use printers like this. Um, there's an Epsilon equivalent, Epson print layout as well, which just makes printing very easy. That's the way to approach that. Now, I said this checkbox that allows you, it does some print sharpening. Now, you've got soft proofing visible uh, on the uh, PPL as well. You can click and check a box on that and see how the profile you're using is going to change the picture. Now, it's useful on occasions, but in general, I don't recommend soft proofing as something you do with every single image because then you rely on it too much rather than actually looking at prints. But I've done loads of videos looking at things like that. What about these other features on it? Well, there's depth. There's HDR print, and there's also one called exhibition lighting, which lightens your print or darkens it, I'm not sure which, uh, to allow for the kind of lighting you might put your prints under when you've got them in an exhibition. So it changes the tonal balance. These all sound very useful features. The only problem is, certainly whilst the contrast reproduction is easy enough to use, the depth HDR and exhibition lighting, they all depend on you having processed your image previously with the Canon DPP software. Now, the Canon DPP software uses Canon's knowledge of their own files, their cameras and everything to do raw conversions, for example, and then has various features that you can use on it and the in printing, and these are the, the ones I mentioned. But, it needs a Canon camera that is supported to do it. Um, you can't do these on any other files. So if I took a, a file I'd produced on some other camera and tried to print it and wanted to use these features, I couldn't use them. That's a relatively minor thing, but yeah, I've got lots of old Canon files which I can run through it. Not my very old ones, but certainly the more recent ones. But my real issue is not the fact that it's proprietary adjustments and that you can't actually do anything about it, is that this is simply not the place to do such adjustments. There is print software is aimed at doing printing. Any adjustments for tonality and things like that really should have been done before you export your file to print to an application like this. Why so? Reproducibility is one of them. If I produce a print file and then drop that print file onto Canon PPL, I can get, a, you know, I can get the same consistent results every time. Now, the features that are inside, the, you know, that are available either with or without using Canon's other software and cameras, those features, there's no explanations of what they do. There are no fine controls on them. So they're an all or nothing. And what's more, there are an all or nothing that you can't sort of really investigate and look at the file and think, well, do I like what this has done to my file? 
or would I rather do it some different way? You can't do that because it's a simple checkbox. And the other thing is you're relying on the fact that Canon are going to do exactly the same uh, processing when in a year or two's time, when you activate those checkboxes, as they do now for the version that you're using. Now, Canon tends to change things. Now, they will say, and quite rightly so, that they're improving things. But the problem is sometimes these improvements come at the cost of losing something that you used before. And if you're looking for any form of consistency, then perhaps that's not what you want to do. But my key problem is that this is not the place. The software here does what it does very well. It prints files very well. I do not want whistles and bells introducing at this point, which I've got no control over. So for example, I can introduce adjustment curves for black and white. Now this is actually quite a useful thing and I will return to it and look at it. And it's an interesting thing as to whether you decide you want it. Now, you could think of these adjustment curves as the equivalent of using the right profiles for printing uh, with color, uh, because you generally would print using the black and white print mode, not the color mode where you use ICC profiles, certainly on a printer like this. The black and white example I showed uses the basic black and white print mode. Dead easy to use, it works, it gives goodish results, depends on the paper though. So you do need to check the paper and sometimes you may need a slight tonal adjustment in the driver. Now, is that against my idea of doing adjustments for that? Well, no, because that's an adjustment for a particular paper. Um, you get your image right, and then maybe you need to apply an adjustment. It's just I'm uncomfortable with having features that require me to use other software or features that I can't control. So let's go back to the original one that I was asked about, the contrast, uh, contrast reproduction. It's a form of sharpening. Now, sharpening key element in photos, and it's a very important element. I've, I've put v videos where I've looked at aspects of sharpening and not sharpening. And one of the important things about sharpening is first of all, not all areas of a print probably need it. Now for people who say, oh, well, I just like just being able to click sharpen for print. That's okay for small pictures and things, but once you start getting to do bigger pictures, and I include even the A2 pictures here, and certainly I'm gonna have a look at doing panoramics on this as well. I want finer control. I want to know, for example, that parts of my image have been sharpened, but not all of it. What parts not? Well, the sky. If you sharpen flat areas of sky, all you're really sharpening is the noise that any sensor will pick up if you're using images that you've got from scan film. It's a whole different area. The kind of sharpening you can actually use on digitally scanned film is completely different to the types of sharpening that works well on digital images. It's because of the fundamental structure of the images. It differs. I know it differs and I want control over it. And having those buttons, just do it. Now, I said I like the Canon PPL software, and so don't take this as a dig against it. It's the overall process I'm not happy with. Uh, it is introducing superfluous features, to my mind, which either tie you into a piece of software that you probably didn't use, and I know very few people who actually use the Canon DPP software for processing their raw files. Um, I've used it one or two times, and I just decided it was too much trouble for any benefits I could possibly see. Now, I have heard it said that some files process better using DPP, but then again, I've got DxO as Optics Pro as was, DxO Photolab as is now, because of the way it processes some files. Some files are better, some Adobe Kappa Raw is just fine. So for that, it, whether it's in Photoshop or whether it's in Lightroom, doesn't really make much difference. But that's, you know, that's for that. Do I want to use DPP? Do many people use DPP regularly? I think not. Um, and adding in features which are DPP only is not going to make people go, oh, I wish I'd used DPP. It's going to make them think, why is that there when I can't use it? That's the way people look at software in general, as I've seen. But let's say the key element or difficulty I have is that this is simply not the place for making such adjustments. Um, you just can't do it. And the other thing is, um, let's say 
I produce a picture and I put it in a show and it wins a prize or something like that. And I decide, several people say, I'd want to buy that picture. I have to go back through the process and it better be the same, the software. Am I trusting the software is going to be the same? Am I going to trust that in the time it may have happened between when it was first printed and when I printed the same, something hasn't changed? Now, that's always something you have to consider. But I don't like being locked into proprietary stuff and particularly proprietary stuff I can't see. But apart from that, I still recommend using it because it makes basic printing on this really easy. Anyway, that's just a, a quibble about workflows. I'll come back to that when I look at some photographs I've taken recently and I'll do some more prints on this and have some discussions of that. But I'm curious to know what people think. Incidentally, if you're wondering what this is, this is a nearly full maintenance cartridge. Um, I've been swapping inks over this. This is powered off at the moment. It will be powered off until tomorrow. And then I'll put it on because I've been away, which means I've been able to switch this off for a week. I want to see how much ink gets used up when I switch it on after it's been powered off for a week. It's very difficult to get any figures or accurate information on this because it depends how you use your printer. Anyway. That's something for me to try and get the scales out and accurately measure all the weights of the uh, cartridges before and after. Anyway, hope that was of some interest. Let me know if you've got any questions and thanks for watching. Oh, please do subscribe, etc. for the channel or pass it on to people and stuff like that. Thank you.